Welcome back folks. So today we're going to start our three-part series on looking at this Zwi oscilloscope. This is the DSO 3D12 and it's Zwi's actual name is this Shenzhen Zhangwei Instrument Technology Company Limited because I bought this off the Zwi official store on AliExpress and here it is so we already had a brief look at this in my last mailbag video so it comes with two probes which is nice because a lot of its competition only come with one probe and a set of alligator clips uh, which is disappointing to say the least but this is nice that they come with two probes however i did note they were just 100 megahertz probes and i guess that's fine if you're using uh, both channels at the same time but it's supposed to be 120 megahertz of uh, bandwidth on this when you're using one channel. So it would have been nice if they gave you, let's say, one 150 megahertz probe and one 100 megahertz probe. But uh, it is nice that they gave you two probes. And they're the standard P6100s. Uh, you get these, uh, you know, they're worth about 6 or $7 if you buy them individually. And it comes with the rings and a little caps to go on the front of it. So if you take these off, what are these caps are for? And uh, these, these don't look like the best examples, but what they're for is for getting down into components when you're probing without the clip. So if you take the clip off, these then uh, will fit down over the probe tip like this and provide some insulation so that you don't short out against other things. So you get a pair of those and you get the color rings so you can match up the colors to the actual color of the display and you get the little screwdriver for doing the compensation it comes with a nice manual here it's not it's not extensive but it, it is all in english so it goes through here it's got uh, button functions it seems to cover everything safety precautions quick start instructions, power on, the auto mode, so it has an auto mode, sensitivity and time base, test built-in generator, use of the multimeters, use of dual channels, probe calibration, but it shows you what the you know, typical compensation diagram. The probe bandwidth, it explains the difference between 1x and 10x, the kind of bandwidth that you can get. Usage chips, large input capacitance. Oh, this, these are good. Usage chips are good. Yeah, this is all good information. Measuring high voltage, so the vertical sensitivity, vertical position, time base, the trigger system, trigger level, sources, trigger mode, and a little operation guide. Introduction to the menus. So we'll go down through the menu, see what everything is there, so that when we do come to use the scope or the DMM or the function generator we all know what we're doing and the specifications page so it's, it's a pretty good manual oh well, here's got a, an interesting q a so it's quite informative good little manual and here we have some multimeter probes well the cabling is not the best but it's not the worst by far it's it's actually quite nice it's it's pretty decent i wouldn't compare it to uh, what you get on a fluke except for maybe one of those cheaper chinese flukes those those have actually worse cables than this it's got the protector over here and it does not have a removable shoulder so yeah they're basic probes they will be functional comes with a USB A to USB C cable. And now for the oscilloscope itself, I don't think there's anything else in there. Nothing up its sleeve. Okay, so get rid of that. This will actually make a good storage box for it. Nice padded. And keep that around. And let's have a look at the scope itself. Well, there it is. Very utilitarian looking gray color. It doesn't have the um, it doesn't have the, the normal form factor of the handheld scopes that you see on the market, but I actually like this form factor better. 
got a very, very sturdy tilting bale on it. It's a nice angle. Like if you have it here, it's a very nice angle for standing up to use it. You can see the, the screen straight on. And I'm, I would say I'm about one meter away from the screen. If I was sitting down, you could have it a little bit closer. And uh, let's have a look at it. So here's the terminals for the multimeter. Here's the two inputs for the oscilloscope, function generator, power switch. Is light here? Or does it light up for charging? Let's see if that is the case. Yes, it does. I imagine it's going to turn green when it's fully charged. And these are buttons here. They're kind of nice. They're they're rubberized chiclet style, but they've got a nice tactile feel to them. So I can't really fault them. They don't. They're not vague at all. They've got a really nice feel. Let's uh, let's get this off here. Let's see the Zavi strip down. Ooh. Get rid of that. It's kind of a glossy screen. It could be a little bit matte. It would it would help. That's about all I can tell from the outside here. So we better get inside it. Let's do that before we turn it on. Now that pops right off there. Okay, we've got the battery. Oh, very nice big battery on the bottom here. Held down with sponge tape. Yeah, what's this here? This is sort of, uh, that just sort of glued on there. Let me disconnect the battery. Yeah, that just seems to be kind of uh, elastic in place. But uh, yeah, we, we can live with that. I mean, you don't get to see that that much, but that's just a little beeper. Wonder what it's covering up there that we won't be able to see though. I'm gonna, let me get a lighted magnifying glass on this. So the only thing it's covering up is the USB socket. So we've got a little metal can here over our front end. The main chip here has been bead blasted, so we can't tell what that is. We've got a one amp fuse here, uh, probably be for the 600 milliamp range. The 10 amp range is unfused, which is, is not great. But I'd say if you, if you have a lot of uh, high current stuff to to measure, I would I would not probably recommend this meter. Okay, that seemed to pop right off there. And we've got the front end, it's got a relay in it. It's got, uh, let me have a look at some of these chips. So this one here has been sandblasted as well, or bead blasted. There's no way to tell what that is. Oh, hold on. So these are 74 HC595s. They're serial to parallel a shift register. It's very difficult, even the, the best of scopes use these to in the front end to switch between different modes and stuff like that. These two here are CMOS switches. So this is a, an OPA2673, which is a high precision operational amplifier. Now let's have a look at some of the chips over here that we can actually see. This here is an AG32VF, which is a CPLV. Yeah, this one here is a Winner Micro W802C200 uh, uh, microcontroller. So I would guess that this here is the ADC, but we can't find out what that is. So this here is a Unisound US665P31 sound processor. Uh, these two here are a couple of operation amplifiers. Here's another 74HC595 serial parallel. So this one here is an IP2312 battery management chip. I guess where that's where the battery connects there, so that makes a bit of sense. Let's look at a couple more things before we, we go here. Now, the fuse is ceramic, but I don't know if, you know, it could be a you know, fake ceramic. These are just uh, little split ring type connectors. So, you know, built down to a price, as they say. Here's a PTC over here, so this might be the front end to the meter making this a, a likely candidate for having the DMM functions built into it. 
Anyway, let's uh, let's put it all back together again and see if it still works. These are nice shielded connectors. It's nice that they've thought about putting a shield over this. All right, here's a moment of truth to see if I bricked it. Oh, it seems to be coming on. And there we go, it comes up, it defaults to coming up to trace one, it looks like. So it looks like, uh, from reading instructions, uh, it looks like you can, if you're only going to use one channel, it has to be channel one. I, I guess that's okay. It doesn't really matter one way or the other, does it? So we've got all these things. We've got a shift key here. So I, if I press this AC, DC, and that's going to change the input to AC. So we see a little sine wave there, DC. And I guess if we have uh, channel two on, then pressing shift AC, DC will change it. Okay, and again we have uh, the same thing with the times 10, so times 10, 100, times 1, and same with the, the channel 2. Yep, and uh, generator, so it brings the generator up, that takes it down, save. That saves a picture, I guess, to have a, a look at later. Now, I didn't find in the manual any way to get the images off it. That's that's one thing that could really improve quite a bit, is to, through the USB port, provide access to the internal memory to get images off it. But as it stands right now, it doesn't look like you can share the images other than taking a picture of them, which is a, a little minus there. Click the menu button. Work your way through a particular menu. This is the measurement menu, by the way. And pressing the OK will enable frequency in this case, or peak to peak. And it looks like you can go down here to do all, but I think it'll take up most of the screen. Oh yeah, it does. But you have uh, frequency, peak to peak, mean, RMS, amplitude, duty, WID. What's WID? It's pulse width and time, rather than in duty, which would be percentage. Uh, period, max, min, top, base, and duty minus. Yeah, so these buttons here, so that one was first measurement was for channel one, second measurement menu is for channel two, then ACDC you press to get the trigger menu. In trigger mode you have auto or normal. Trigger level is auto or manual. Trigger edge, rise or fall, and source channel one or channel two. I think that this is fine if you really need some you know, fancy trigger like zone triggering or, or, or triggering on a particular sequence or runt triggering and stuff like that. You, you're going to have to spend more money and get a, a, a better scope. Okay, you know, display. You can turn persistence off one second or infinity. You can put roll mode on or off, high rate on or off. I don't know what high rate is. I'll have to have a look at the manual and you can change the brightness. And then go over here to plus. Pretty decent range there. Leave it in the middle. Somehow it turned the graticule off. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. Let's go down here to set. English FFT. It could be off, log, linear, or music. Calibration mode. Remove all the probes first, please. And now I got my graticule back on. Okay, I couldn't find anything in the documentation about it, but I did find by frigging around that if you're on persistence up here and you press OK long enough, a long press, it, change, it changes the graticule. You can turn it off, you can make it dotted graticule, or you can make it a solid graticule. I think I'll go with dotted. But uh, it would be nice if they put that in the documentation. And I've, I've seen somewhere on the internet, I'll, I'll try to get it for the next part of this three-part series, there's some other features that are undocumented as well. And we'll have a look at those. So you can get to measure for channel one by pressing the stop button, measure for channel two by pressing the single button, trigger by pressing the ACDC button, display by pressing the X10, X1 button, and settings by pressing the DMM button. All right. All right, so that's a, a trip through the menu there. Let's turn that off. And uh, let's set up the uh, generator for one kilohertz square wave, and then we'll take the probes out and set those up. So let's get the generator. So let's go over here, set it for a kilohertz. 
So the time based button here will change the waveform. And we've got it set for one kilohertz square wave. And we'll do the probe compensation. Okay, I got a probe here set up with the yellow bands on it. We'll put that in for channel one here. Okay, we have a signal there, so let's see what auto does for us. That looks like it's pretty well compensated, maybe a little touch. So we'll get that here. Let's uh, increase the uh, size of everything here so we can see it better. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, now we can't turn channel one off, but we can turn channel two on and get the other probe over here. So we got a nice signal there on channel two, and it looks like it's it's pretty well compensated there to begin with. I wonder if they compensate these at the factory beforehand because they both came out pretty good. So we can just look at channel two. Okay, folks, I think that's it for today. Uh, come back for part two where we're going to take a, a closer look at the the oscilloscope and run it through its paces. But at least now we are slightly familiar with the user interface and uh, we can navigate around through it. And we've had a look at the basic unit, the menu system, the interface, and we had a look inside it. Not much we could tell from in there because all the important chips were bead blasted, but uh, that's to be expected. I guess I don't want people stealing their, their ideas. All right, folks, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.